We found paradise on Palawan in the Philippines. But it took us seven whole days to get there. Our quest for paradise began on the northern tip of Palawan Island, in a town right at the top of most Philippines itineraries. Welcome to El Nido. Look at this place, it's stunning. El Nido attracts millions of tourists every single year, famed for its incredible island hopping trips and trademark epic cliffs all around. I'll tell you what, the views when we were pulling in on the ferry were absolutely beautiful. It's like Jurassic Park. On paper, Coron and El Nido are actually pretty similar. They're both towns that people jump off from for island hopping, for seeing lagoons and beautiful beaches. But El Nido definitely feels like a much more established town in sort of the Thai island sense of the word. There's a lot of bars and cafes on the beach and there's a lot of building work going on. It's actually so busy now that if you want to get onto Tour A, which includes most of the main sites on the neighbouring islands, such as Big Lagoon and Small Lagoon, you actually have to book that at least two days in advance because the local tourism board actually limits the amount of numbers of people that are allowed to go in there every day. We had already seen some lagoons in Koran, so to try and avoid the crowds, we booked ourselves onto one of the less popular tours on offer in hopes of finding some paradise beauty whilst avoiding too many other people. Today we are on Tour B, which is all about caves and beaches. We jumped onto our tour boat and headed out to sea. But could this tour really show us paradise? As we left the beach, we saw even more of the stunning coastline around the edge of El Nido. Before too long, we arrived at our first stop on Entalula Beach. We ducked under the low hanging cliffs to find the main beach and there were quite a lot of people there already. But one feature seemed to be its biggest draw. Just sitting here watching people queue up to take Instagram photos in front of this rock. It's a good spot. The next stop was Snake Island, which is definitely not as scary as it sounds. It's named after this amazing twisting sandbar covered in incredible clear waters. You can hike up to a viewpoint from the beach where you can see exactly why it gets its name. Of course, the main viewpoint gets quite busy, but you can get lots of other nice views from up there as well. Next, we headed to a couple of different caves, but neither were that essential to visit. One of them was hidden inside this tiny opening in the rock, which was very interesting to navigate when you're over six foot tall. You're so long. The cave is on this beach, which is probably the quietest and the nicest we've been to so far. But unfortunately, we didn't stay here for very long. The last spot was by far the most beautiful but if you think I'm going to try and pronounce that name, you can forget it. The jagged rock formations and blue waters here were really amazing. But we never really found that true secluded paradise beach. But then again, crowds are just part and parcel with visiting one of the most touristy places in the Philippines. And it turns out that the best beach in El Nido is actually back on the mainland. Only about 40 minutes drive from town. It costs a thousand pesos for the tricycle for the return trip. And the main road is actually pretty smooth. It's just when you turn off onto the road heading towards Nakpan, it's very bumpy down there. But getting your first views of the beach itself makes the journey all worthwhile. Beach is over four kilometers long and just a few years ago there was really nothing here. These days there are a lot of little beach bars and restaurants around the main parking area 
but because the beach is so long, it's very easy to find a spot all to yourself. And the sunsets here are out of this world. So I know what you're thinking. Ryan, this all looks like paradise to me. And yes, it is. But on Palawan, it gets so much better than this. The next morning, we took a tricycle over to the main bus station. And we jumped onto a minibus heading down to the south of the island. After a long and bumpy four hour journey, we arrived at our next destination, which felt very different indeed. We've made it to Port Barton. I'm already detecting a much more chilled vibe here than in El Nido, which is very nice. Sick. Port Barton is a dusty little town with a very laid back atmosphere. In fact, only about 5,000 people live here and it's not uncommon that you'll be left without any electricity and you can pretty much forget about good Wi-Fi too. This is a place to truly disconnect from the modern world. I think finally we found a place that's kind of lined up with my expectations of the Philippines. This kind of atmosphere, very chilled, nice beach. This is what I've been looking for. It's not like Port Barton is the last frontier or anything. There are a lot of backpackers here. And just walking down the beach, you see lots of cafes, bars, restaurants, but it's just so much more chilled than El Nido. It's also a hell of a lot cheaper. You know, just going by beer, which is always a good measure. You pay 80 pesos for a beer in El Nido. On the beach here in Port Barton, the maximum I've paid is 50, which is very good. But this place is far more than just the relaxed hippie town. There are actually a lot of things to see and do in this area. So, I guess we should go and find them. Today is our first full day in Port Barton, so we've rented a motorbike and we're once again putting our lives into Emma's hands as she drives us around the local area. How do you feel? Well, great, now you said that. <laughs> Our first stop today is going to be a waterfall. I don't know how much water there's going to be there because it is the summertime, but apparently it's still worth checking out. The roads around Port Barton are very rocky and dangerous, so be careful if you are renting a bike to get around. The first sign of danger. I have to get off and walk. There were a fair few obstacles on the way. The main road is quite smooth, but then when you turn off to the waterfall road, it's quite bumpy. And it should be a 20 minute walk from here to the actual falls. Look at this, loads of water. It's just gone nine in the morning and we have this whole place to ourselves. We loved it so much here that we actually made two separate visits to have a swim in the refreshing water. And I really do recommend getting here early to have it all to yourselves. So we're gonna get back on the bike now and head in the direction of White Beach, but on the way, there may be another spot called Coconut Beach that we're gonna try and find. The advantage of having your own bike is that you can stop in beautiful places like this. We have made it to Coconut Beach. Look how beautiful this place is. There's barely anybody here. Got this whole section to ourselves. 
it's not the most pristine beach we've been to. It's quite a lot of seaweed and the sand's a little bit coarse and the water's not the clearest that we've seen, but the peace of quiet is worth so much. It's honestly like having your own little private beach. Coconut Beach was really, really nice, but now it's time to head over to White Beach. <laughs> White Beach looks almost identical to Coconut Beach, but it's a lot more built up with bars and even a few rooms to stay in. So that naturally brings more people here. But you know, I don't know why you wouldn't just go to Coconut Beach. Not taking anything away from White Beach, it is a beautiful, beautiful beach, but Coconut Beach is very similar and it's more peaceful. Cheers. So there are plenty of places around Port Barton that you could probably class as paradise. But believe it or not, it got even better the very next day. Good morning. Today we are going on a boat trip around some snorkeling spots, some islands, and I'm very excited. I didn't have any expectations for the sights around here. I just didn't think it could compare to the epic scenes of Corona El Nido. But this was a day full of surprises. Starting out with just how calm the waters were here. It honestly felt like we were gliding along the surface of a lake. Very quickly, we moored up on this tiny empty stretch of sand. It only took us about five minutes to get to our first stop, which is Starfish Island. And we basically got it all to ourselves. Our group, anyway. And it really does live up to its name. The whole sandbar is covered in hundreds of starfish in all different shapes and sizes, which was a really nice way to start the day. Port Barton doesn't have the epic landscapes of El Nido above the water, but it does have some incredible sights below the surface. We headed out a little further to do some snorkeling. And once again, we really didn't expect it to be so good. We made about six different stops for snorkeling throughout the day, and there were loads of fish and colorful corals to see. The water was crystal clear, and this was the most life I'd seen in the waters of the Philippines so far. highlight was when we were joined by this old fella who got right up close and personal to us. The cool thing is we arrived at a different island called German Island where we were supposed to have lunch but it was really really busy there. Instead of just mooring up and letting us sit with all the hundreds of other people the driver said oh do you want to go to a quieter spot? So he took us about 10 more minutes away to this sandbar and we are literally the only boat here. We seem to be getting to places before everyone else or without anybody else there so it's nice to have that peace. The boatmen cooked up an amazing lunch for us here and I swear nobody grills meat and fish better than people in the Philippines. But at the start of this video, I promise you paradise. And in my eyes, we didn't find it until our very last stop. We arrived at the twin islands of Maxima and Exotic Island. Joined together by a stunning sandbar that was deep underwater by the time we got there. So we had to wade our way across the water and on the other side, you can hike up over the hill to find this very special place. It's just a short walk over the hill. And my God, this place looks unreal.
This has got to be the most beautiful beach I've ever seen. And it's just me, Emma, and two dogs. Basically got it all to ourselves. Palm trees, white sand, blue, crystal clear water. Unreal. And that is how we found a true secluded paradise in Palawan. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time for another Philippines adventure.